Hi crafters, the project I'll be making today is a coffee themed shaker card plus a matching treat box. I'm starting off with a piece of ivory card stock of standard A2 size. I'm going to use a plastic bag to apply some ground espresso distress ink onto directly from the pad, then I'm spritzing it with water and transferring the ink onto my piece of cardstock. This will create splatter effect. I can repeat the process if I need to add more layers. You can either let the ink air dry or speed up the drying with a heat tool. The dies I will be using are double stitched rectangles by Cat Scrappiness. They are perfect for making stitched frames and panels and this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm using three rectangles from the set and securing them with washi tape. Another set I'm going to use is stitched fancy scalloped hearts, also by Cat Scrappiness. I'm positioning one of the hearts inside the rectangular frame and taping it down. Then I am going to run it all through the die cutting machine. I'm going to need this large frame and the panel with the heart window. Here you can see the nice stitch touches. I have cut out the acetate panel with the same die and to make it a tiny bit smaller I'm using stitching as a guide to trim off the edges. I'm doing it because I don't want the acetate to be seen at the edge. So now I am applying tape adhesive at the wrong side of the frame and sticking down the acetate. Next I used the same dies as I did before to make a vellum panel and this white stitched heart. I'm going to fit the heart right inside the window and secure it in place by running a tape gun at the wrong side. And then I'll attach the whole panel to the acetate frame. Now I'm going to use the largest of the stitched hearts to create a vellum pocket with the arched decorative edge. I am applying some tacky glue by Scotch at three edges of the pocket, trying to squeeze out as little glue as possible. And then I'm attaching it on its place. When the glue dries, it will be totally invisible. To make a shaker frame, I am applying tape adhesive again at the wrong side and then I'll be sticking some craft foam on top. You can use uh, mounting tape instead, but in that case you'll need to apply two layers of it. This craft panel will be the backdrop for the shaker frame. I am trimming it the same way as I trimmed the acetate. 
Before I assemble the shake up frame, I will also need to trace this heart on the inside and then cut it out with the scissors. So now I am applying adhesive again and then I can fill in my shaker frame. The sequins I'm going to use are Caramel Letter by, by Cut Scrappiness. It's the mix of different shapes, sequins, beads and confetti of yummy colors. When the sequins are evenly spread inside the frame, I'm covering them with a backdrop panel and pressing it down firmly. Then I'm going to attach the shaker frame onto the A2 size chipboard note card. This is the heart that I have cut out earlier out of craft cardstock and now I am gluing it onto my card. This medium is liquid enamel dots by Fabrica Decoro. The color is called Strong Coffee. I'm squeezing a generous amount of that medium onto the heart and with a needle tool I am spreading it until it touches the edges of cardstock. It's important to take your time and not spill it over the edge. Now I am adding more medium to the center to fill all the area. This is the same medium enamel dots, but it's different color, called jasmine. I'm squeezing small drops of it all around the edges. Now I'm going to simply drag the pick tool along the dots, and this will create the pattern similar to a leafy branch. Then I'll set it aside to dry overnight. I have also die-cut two small stitched tags, but instead of punching holes, I will be attaching two sequins from the set I used to fill in the shaker. Then I will also stamp the sentiment on one of the tags. When the enamel is completely dry, I can insert the tags into the vellum pocket. And the card is finished. To make a matching treat bag, I am trimming a sheet of craft cardstock. It should be 10 inches wide. Then I am using gift bag punch board by We Are Memory Keepers to create a bag template and then I will be assembling the bag. I am going to add the splatters to the bag just as I did to the card. I am folding a piece of white cardstock in half to create a topper for my bag. I'll be using a heart from the same set and positioning it on top of cardstock so that the two edges of a die are hanging off the folded edge of the cardstock, like this. 
Then I can secure it with a tape and send it through the machine. What I will get is very similar to a small valentine. To decorate the back topper I am placing it back and then inking it up right through the die. It's the same ink I used for splatters. I will be using the alphabet die set to spell the word coffee. This one is by memory box. Then I am simply sticking all the letters one by one onto the lacy heart. This is the letter O from another alphabet set, but I will only need a negative piece from the middle. I want to use it to create a coffee bean. I'm going to trace a curved line with a pencil. And then I'm cutting along this line. It's as simple as that. All I have to do now is to stick my coffee bean along with uh, some smaller sequins from the set to finish off the back topper. I will be filling the bag with these coffee flavored candies. I am going to set up a couple of staples to keep the bag closed. Now I'm sticking two foam squares to the topper and attaching it to the bag. This way it will be easy to take off, even without tearing it. So here is what my finished gift set looks like. Thank you for watching this tutorial. For more inspiration, please click on any image to watch more videos. Have a fantastic day and I'll be seeing you really soon!